What's up, Empire Builders? Welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about the daily email topic, which was negative interest rates won't save us. Now, there is this re-energized conversation, which is not a new conversation, but it's definitely got some uh, some recent attention, which is, hey, how come the U.S. doesn't just go, you know, go below negative, go below the boundary, go below zero, right, into negative rate territory? Everyone else is. And there's, there's this attempted conversation that it's better, it would have helped save us, uh, it would have helped turn around the, the great 2009 economic uh, crisis faster, and I'm here to tell you today that all of that is quite silly. So if you like uh, this stuff, macro economy, then go ahead, take a second, show some support, brand new channel, click the like button and subscribe, hit the bell notification, comment below with what you got to say. Okay, so back in February, the San Francisco Fed uh, published, ran a letter titled, How Much Could Negative Interest Rates Have Helped the Recovery? And they even have this fancy little chart here, which would have shown that it would have broken above and... Um, and started to break out quicker, back out into prosperity, right? Versus this blue line, which is what actually happened. And it's interesting because that came just, I think, two weeks. Yeah, January 30th. This was published uh, early February. Uh, let's get the exact date. February 4th. So, yeah, I mean, oh, wow. It's like days days later um, that, that was published by the San Francisco uh, Fed and... Just before that, we have the ECB, European Central Bank, essentially saying that um, negative interest rates uh, fix, equalize, level out inequality. And uh, that's not true at all. And so now we've got, you know, since January, we've got uh, negative interest rates rolling throughout Europe uh, and rolling throughout Japan, and it is not solving anything. So here's what's hilarious is here is um, February 4th, and here is August 26th. Read this very first paragraph here that I've got highlighted. After Japan introduced a negative policy uh, interest rate in 2016, market expectations for inflation over the medium term fell immediately. This can be seen by assessing how prices for Japanese bonds uh, with embedded deflation protection responded to the policy announcement. The reaction stresses the uncertainty surrounding the effectiveness of negative policy rates as expansionary tools when inflation expectations are anchored at low levels. Japan's experience also illustrates the desirability of taking preemptive steps to avoid the zero interest rate bound. Um, in plain terms, that means it didn't work. So we've had a complete turn of expectation in six months so it doesn't you know it's like i try to defend the fed and the central banks and say that they're not just idiots that this is all part of a plan maybe this is just diversion maybe this is all just propaganda i don't know or maybe they are right and i'm wrong and it turns out that the central bankers are complete idiots and they've gotten by the last hundred years with sheer luck okay um but needless to say we have a case study example of negative interest rates not working. Um, since 2016, Japan's, you know, been in negative interest rates. It's not working. Yeah, it's, that's it. And then to add fuel to that fire, we have Mark Carney uh, at the uh, Jackson Hole that just, uh, the Jackson Hole Central Bank Summit that just happened about a week ago now. He said that past instances of very low rates have tended to coincide with high risk events such as wars, financial crisis, and breaks in monetary regime. So he's essentially saying that no, negative interest rates don't work as well. So this is a classic uh, case of what I call flip flop eddy, whereas um, one week it's this, the servant agenda, the next week it's that. So, and you'll see this, and that's why one of the most important things to take away from this and a lot of the data that I show you that is released from central banks, the IMF and BIS is watch what they say. A lot of times, I don't think this is necessarily that they are idiots, that it's that they are running diversion. So I'll give you a prime example of this. Uh, head of the BIS, I can never remember his name, Augustine, I think. He comes out in one month and says cryptocurrencies are the devil and they're horrible and they're money laundering and drug infested and they're just an awful thing, right? And then I want to say about six months later, he recently said that he is supporting central banks creating their own digital currencies. So which is it? You know, and why did he say that? He said that because he wanted to try and railroad the conversation. He wanted to try and stall out the conversation to give them more time to build out their own version of it. This is true for JP Morgan. Jamie Dimon has been guilty of this. 
for all we know, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, who've been strong opponents of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, maybe they're working on their own too. Facebook, we've seen this with a lot of not only um, banks, but organizations. So they come out and even governments take a negative stance and then all of a sudden positive stance. Oh, we got our own. We're going to use it. And I see that as very similar with situations like this. So this could be just they're trying to seed consciousness with the idea of a negative interest rate and see how people accept it and start to get them used to seeing it in other countries to then roll it out in the United States. I don't know. Or maybe this is just a prime example of research that was pushed out to try and go one direction and then they realized that the push back and the data just sucked and they couldn't push this agenda. So then maybe let's go back to what we were doing before. I don't know. Um, anyways. That's the video for today. Quick one for you. If you like this, go ahead and click the like button. Show us some support. Comment below. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. If you want these daily emails for free sent to your inbox, oh my gosh, all you got to do, link below. Subscribe. Put your email address in there and it'll be sent right to you. No shenanigans. No bullshit. Just a daily email. That's fire macro economy. And uh, there you go. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.